Drilling line is high-strength heavy-duty wire rope. The manufacturer braids several wires together to form the rope. Drilling line comes in diameters ranging from 7 eighths of an inch to 2 inches, about 22 to 51 millimeters. Crew members string or reeve drilling line between the crown block and the traveling block. The more lines they reeve, the more weight the system can support. Here, for example, they reef the line five times between the blocks so that ten lines support the traveling block. Here's the crown block and traveling block strung together by drilling line. Note how the traveling block goes up and down as the driller takes in or lets out drilling line. The deadline is drilling line that runs to the deadline anchor. The fast line is drilling line that runs to the draw work. Notice the five wraps of drilling line between the crown and the traveling block. Five wraps makes for ten lines. Ten lines can lift ten times the weight of a single line. Also notice that the crown block has one more shiv than the traveling block. This extra shiv is for the fast line. Drilling line comes to the rig on a large supply reel. Normally, crew members string the needed amount of line through the traveling and crown blocks and onto the draw works. Then, they keep the extra line on this supply reel. The reason they keep the extra line is for a slip and cut program. As the driller raises and lowers the traveling block and its associated loads, the drilling line wears. It tends to wear more where it passes over the traveling block shivs and the crown block shivs. The line has to bend around the shivs, and this puts extra stress on it. The line also wears more where it reaches the end of the drawworks drum. It has to reverse direction here and start back the other way on the drum. This direction change puts extra stress on the line. To distribute the wear on the drilling line, the crew slips the line a predetermined amount. Slipping the line moves the wear points on the line. To slip the line, crew members lower the traveling block to the rig floor. They then rig up a special hang line from the crown beam to the top of the traveling block. The hang line keeps the block from moving. With the block unable to move, they unclamp the drilling line at the deadline anchor. The driller then uses the draw works to pull new line off the supply reel. The line slips through the deadline anchor and stationary traveling block. The worn line reels onto the draw works drum. To keep too much line from accumulating on the drum, crew members cut off the end of the worn fast line and discard it. This is the deadline anchor. It firmly secures the drilling line and keeps it from moving. Drilling line comes off the supply reel and loops several times around the anchor. The rig crew then firmly clamps the line to the anchor. The line leaves the anchor, goes through the crown and traveling blocks, and then to the draw works. Clamping the deadline to the deadline anchor mechanically isolates the drilling line from the supply reel. Because the line is stationary, it is called the deadline. The draw works has a large spool or drum around which the crew members wrap the drilling line. Power from the engines or electric motors drive the draw works drum. When the driller activates a control and releases the brake, the drum reels in drilling line. Reeling in drilling line raises the traveling block and whatever is attached to it. To lower the traveling block, the driller releases the drawworks brake. The force of gravity pulls the block down. The driller controls the descent by applying the brake to slow or stop the downward travel. The smallest drawworks are around 550 horsepower, while the largest have 4,000 horsepower, about 400 to 3,000 kilowatts. Small drawworks can handle wells drilled to around 3,000 feet. 1,000 meters deep. The largest 
can handle 40,000 foot or 12,000 meter depths. When the driller moves the brake handle down, the drawworks brake bands exert friction on both rims of the drum. We're only showing one rim to keep it simple. This friction slows or stops the drum. When the driller lifts the brake handle a small amount, tension on the bands eases. With tension eased, the drawworks drum rotates a small amount to gradually lower the load. When the driller lifts the handle up fully, the bands do not touch the drum rims at all. The drum rotates freely and the load drops in free fall. Many new drawworks use a disc brake system. Disc brakes are more efficient than drum brakes. A typical disc brake system consists of three major components. Two discs, one on each end of the drum. A hydraulic operating system, which you can't see here. And caliper and pad assemblies. The system has six service calipers, three on each disc, and two emergency calipers, one on each disc. When the driller engages the brake, hydraulic pressure pushes in the pads inside each service caliper. The pads contact the disc and slow or stop the drum. If hydraulic pressure fails, the emergency calipers set automatically. Mounted on the end of the drawworks drum shaft is an electrodynamic brake. It is an auxiliary brake that uses powerful electromagnets. The electromagnetic force works against the turning force of the drawworks drum shaft. It assists the mechanical drum or disc brake you just saw. It controls the speed of the load as it goes down. The driller cannot control the load speed with the drum or disc brake alone. The weight of the load, plus the tremendous inertia it creates when moving, is just too great. So, the driller activates the electrodynamic brake. The electrodynamic brake provides most of the braking force when the drawworks drum is turning. The most modern drawworks braking system does not use an electrodynamic brake. Instead, the drawworks is powered by a special computerized motor and control system. The computer control system allows the drive motor to power the drawworks and provide the auxiliary braking force. Mounted on the drawworks, near the drawworks drum, is a crown saver, or a crownomatic, a brand name. A crown saver keeps the driller from accidentally raising the traveling block into the crown block. It has a probe that activates an air actuated toggle switch if the driller takes in too much drilling line onto the drawworks drum. Too much line indicates that the driller has raised the traveling block too high in the mast. If he raised the block any more, it would crash into the crown block or separate the rotary hose, causing a lot of damage. Too much line on the drum activates the toggle switch. The switch then immediately engages the drawworks brake and disengages the drawworks clutch. Clutch disengagement disconnects the drawworks drum from its power source. The latest drawworks use an electrically actuated crown saver system, but still maintains the pneumatic crown saver as backup. 